In this tutorial, I'm going to show you Neil Patel's top three most powerful SEO ranking tips for 2018 and how to apply them to your WordPress site so that you can rank higher starting soon. It doesn't happen instantly. Rankings don't come immediately. You apply changes and then you rank higher over time. But I'm going to show you Neil's top tips and how to apply them to your site. And we're getting started right now. What's up guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you're new here and you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe because I'm always sharing new WordPress tips, tricks, and hacks, and just ways to make your life easier and better with WordPress. And if you also haven't joined our Facebook group yet, you should check that out in the link in the description down below. It's a free group. It is a private group, so you have to apply for it, but it's free. And you can come in there and chat WordPress. We help each other, we get better at WordPress, and we do this all kinds of WordPress related stuff in that group. And with that out of the way, let's head in the screen capture. SEO is super important. If you've been around it for a little while, you've probably heard of a guy named Neil Patel. I followed him for many years. He has a site at neilpatel.com and quicksprout.com, and he bought Hello Bar a little while ago. He's the creator of Crazy Egg and Kissmetrics. He's got a lot of stuff going on online and he's really good at SEO. And his core thing is writing content and lots of content. He's a content marketer. And in this video that he has right here, he covers the three most powerful SEO tips, according to him, to rank in 2018 and going forward, because these tips, they, they, last, they, they last a long time because they're giving Google what Google wants. And that's how you last longer. You don't do the scammy ways of, of SEO, like building crappy backlinks, um, spamming your keywords into your posts. All that stuff doesn't work anymore. It used to work, not anymore. And in this video, Neil Patel specifically references the Hummingbird update, which is an update that looks at the content on your site to make sure it's thorough content. And what has happened is that Google gives preference to websites that focus on one niche or niche. So if you have a site about everything, it's much harder to rank for anything. But if you have a site that's very specific, Neil goes into the example of dating sites. If you have a dating site and it's very, very specific and it's just about dating, covers all the different topics. It covers what the dating sites are, how to use them, how to do the perfect profile image and all that kind of stuff. You can see it in this video. But basically, if you are very thorough in your market and you write content that when the user is finished reading it, they don't have any more questions. So maybe your topic is how to create the perfect picture for a dating site. And that entire post, it's not just a post to reach 500 words so you can get content out there. That post is designed to answer every possible question you can think of about creating the perfect picture and have that in the post. So when the user's done reading it, they don't have any more questions. And they say, wow, that's exactly what I needed. And of course, Google sees the time on page so they can see how long people are there. And that is a good positive ranking signal because it didn't just bounce off. Either way, Google Hummingbird wants a lot of thorough content and a very specific website focus. The second thing Neil covers is meta descriptions and meta tags. So if we go to any Google search result, let's just search for WordPress. We have a title, a link and a description. And if you've been around WordPress and SEO at, for any amount of time, you know what this stuff is. And it's pretty straightforward. And the way we get this onto our WordPress site and customize these things is with the Yoast plugin. First, you need the Yoast plugin installed. I've linked a tutorial up above that helps you do that. And if you go then to any page, I'm just going to add a new page. And we scroll down a ways, we'll see the SEO Yoast meta box right here. Might have to click this arrow to open it if it's not open already. And in here, we can preview and edit our snippet. So if we click on edit, the title is pulled in from the title up here, which I don't have anything set for. But let's just call this my t-shirts. If I could spell my t-shirts. It's going to save draft. Now we have the my t-shirts title, my t-shirts in the URL. And we're going to pretend that's the keyword I'm trying to target. The keyword is my t-shirts. So in our meta description here, we have my t-shirts. You might have a longer title than that, but we have basically my t-shirts. We have the slug, my t-shirts, and then we can add a meta description in here, which is maybe something like my t-shirts are the best shirts I have ever worn. And then you fill in more information here. So you write a meta description that people want to click on. It's got to be enticing. It's got to be 
It's got to provide value to the viewer, to the reader, and make them want to click on it, click through to your website. That is what this information is for. The title, the URL, and the meta description is just there to get the user to click. And this is where we customize that. So we customize the appearance of what's in Google with Google or with SEO Yoast in this section right here. When we're done, click on Close Snippet Editor, click on Publish, Update, Save Draft, whatever you have to do, and then that is saved. But it takes time to update in Google. So Google does not instantly realize that you've updated your meta description and it comes in and updates it in its database. It has to come and crawl the page, has to update its index, and it takes a lot of time. So just be aware, you make a change on your site, it doesn't mean that the change happens instantly out here. It can take up to a month, 30 days before it appears out here. Usually it's a lot faster, but it can take some time. The third tip Neil has is get Google Search Console. I've linked a tutorial up above to help you set up and verify Google Search Console. And this is the new design that's coming soon. It's still in beta, but this is this information is also in the old design. So here we can see our total clicks and impressions. Now that's important because the impressions is how many times your search result is viewed. So when someone searches for WordPress or any search, say you are the third or fourth result right here, and they search for this keyword, you have an impression. An impression is registered in your Google Search Console. And when they click on a link to go to your site, that's registered as a click. And you want to try to get your click-through rate, which is the number of clicks divided by the number of impressions and turn into a percentage, you want that to be as high as possible. Neil, who's been doing SEO forever, says a 5% click-through rate is really good, but you're probably going to have less than that. I've got a 4.5, which is, I'm happy with that, that's good. Sometimes specific pages can have a lot higher click-through rate. So this is just the average for the entire site. So if we go to pages, well first actually let's just look at the queries. These are the queries down below that people are actually searching. You used to get this data in Google Analytics, but you don't anymore. But you still get it inside of Google Search Console for now. Google might take that away as well. But for now you get it here. So contact form seven, two columns gets 300 clicks, 1,200 impressions. That's about a 25% click-through rate, which is pretty good. Uh, very good, actually. Um, but you can see what people are searching for and what the click-through rate is for those values. And the way you use this to improve your content is you go to Pages, click on any page. I'm just going to click on the two-column one. That adds that page to the search values or the filter values up at the top. And now we see this data is updated for that specific page. So we have an 11.8% overall click-through rate for this page. If we head back to queries, now it's showing all the queries used to find this page. And so what Neil does and what I do when I have time, which I don't, but if I had time, what I would do is I would go and extend this content to include all of these search queries and optimize it for all the different ways people are searching for this page and getting to this page. And there are currently 593 different variations. And when you read these, you can incorporate these just as plain English written language, which you should inside of a post. Don't cram them in, that's called keyword stuffing. Write them in a way that's natural. If you don't include every single one, that's fine. But try to get as many of these as possible onto the content on your page and then Google will naturally over time rank you higher for these. You won't get to number one instantly or maybe ever, but you get to rank higher, meaning more traffic. And because there are five, almost 600 different keywords bringing traffic to this post, if you rank a little bit higher for even half of them, your traffic to that page is gonna go up a lot. So that's how you use these queries to improve your content. And that's the three tips that Neil gave. It was create long content that covers a topic completely and thoroughly. And your website should focus on covering a topic completely and thoroughly. Optimize your meta descriptions and your titles and your URLs to get a higher click-through rate. And then add more of these queries to your content and it basically just extend your content. There's no limit to how long it can be. If you look at Neil's blog, his posts are thousands of words. It's not uncommon to find a post that's over 10,000 words on his blog. And what he does is what I just told you and what he shares in this video, which you should go check out after this, just include these keywords that you find in here and extend your content. 
Include what people are searching for. Include what Google is presenting your material for, which queries it's presenting it for. Include that content and those keywords to rank higher for those queries. And that's how Neil does it. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the Facebook group in the description down below. And then check out one of these videos that pop up on the right hand side so you get even better at WordPress. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.